Batting can not only be one of the most frustrating things, but also one of the greatest adrenaline-inducing activities of not just cricket, but any sport. So in this video, we will take you through some tips that will help you enjoy batting so much more and at the end of the day, help you score a bunch more runs. So first things first, technique is important, really important, but it's not everything. There have been way too many times that we see players with incredible technique that just don't get the runs they should be getting. And that can be because of a few reasons. But mostly, it's just the fact that when we overfocus that much on technique, we end up losing a bunch of our fluidity, we end up losing power, and finally we also lose some timing. This happens as we are simply way too stiff and tense at the crease, limiting our ability to move freely and have a nice full swing. This basically destroys your batting's natural flair. Every single player has a perfect version of their own swing, and that's where we as coaches come in. We try and help you build a solid enough technical base around your swing to allow you to get the most out of your yep. own style. So if not fine technique, yep. what should we focus on then when batting? Yep. The answer is key fundamentals. These key fundamentals include keeping your head nice and still, watching the ball from the release to contact point, making sure you have a head in line with the ball, playing the ball through its correct line with a nice full swing and playing the ball as late as possible for any given shot. By focusing on these small things, we can make sure that we give ourselves the best possible chance to capitalize on every single ball we face. The next big tip or piece of advice is around how we approach our innings. A lot of players want to play too many shots way too fast. When we do this, we simply don't give ourselves enough time to truly get our eye in or get comfortable out there in the middle. There's always a lot more time than you think you have and allowing yourself to take that time and consume those balls will give you the best possible shot to score some decent runs and get yourself and your team into a winning position. Think about it this way. Would you rather have a batter that gets 40 runs from 30 balls or would you rather have a batter that gets 80 runs from 85 balls? I personally would rather take the batter that scores 80 runs almost every single time as that 80 run innings tends to win or put your team into a winning position way more times than the 40 or 30. A big thing here is obviously like we have said many times before in our videos that you still have to have a positive outlook and look to score runs. By consuming balls we don't mean blocking the opposition to death or letting the bowler get away with bad deliveries. We just mean that you can afford to play lower risk cricket until the situation demands you to take a bit more risk. And even then, you have a bit more time than you think. So how do we make sure that we play a lower risk, more consistent brand of cricket? Simply batting within your game plan. We have covered creating your own batting game plan in massive detail in the past, and I'll link that video in the description below. But basically, all you want to do is back towards your strengths and try and avoid your weaknesses. And all whilst doing that, look to score runs yeah. off every ball in this order. Yeah. Look to get a boundary. If the ball is there yeah. for a boundary, obviously. If it's not, try and rotate strike. If the ball's too good to try and rotate strike to, leave yeah. it. Let it go through to the keeper. And finally, if you can't leave the ball, that's when we look to defend. The last thing we want to cover in this video is something a bit more personal that we feel not a lot of players or coaches tend to speak about or not mentioned nearly enough in today's game and that is ego. Now obviously we don't mean ego as being a super arrogant jerk although if you do feel that resonates with you stop it. Most teams don't like arrogant jerks within them so it's probably best that you fix that habit real quick. Okay back to the topic at hand ego. When we refer to ego, we are referring to skill and playing ability ego. And this can mean a variety of things. Playing shots that you have no business playing, leading to losing your wicket, and honestly having a pretty bad time out there batting. It can also mean ego in the sense of listening and learning. All the best players in the world have one big thing in common, and that is listening and absorbing. This means that they speak to players of all levels and absorb the information they feel they can resonate with inside their game. Sometimes you can find a gem of a tip from someone that you would least expect it from. So make sure to talk to a lot of players. And the final part of ego comes into actually practicing and enjoying the game. The biggest thing when it comes to this wonderful sport is that you will fail a lot, way more than you succeed. The greatest batters in the world average one score of higher than 50 in about three innings. This means they fail up to two or even three times for every one time they succeed. So when it comes to practice situations and match situations, remember to take small wins and have fun. 
be realistic about your skill level, and don't expect the world straight off the bat. Obviously, always try your best, but there's no point in hating the day if it doesn't go your way. All of us have had terrible and great days playing the sport, and the big thing is to make sure that you value the good ones and try and learn something from the bad ones. Thank you to all our members that support this channel. To check out another tip video, check the video in the top right corner. We'll see you there.